New research shows Canada's bee population is facing a dire future due to expanding agriculture and development in the northeastern parts of the continent. The native plants bees rely on heavily are disappearing, and it's something that could also affect our future. Sandra Rahan is an associate professor of biology with York University's Faculty of Science, as well as an expert in wild bee uh, genomics, behavior, and conservation. She joins me from St. Catharines, Ontario today. Thank you for your time. Hi. Talk to us about what is happening here. Uh, we, we know that there has been a concern with regards to the bee population, but we understand that the numbers are quite drastic. Yes, so um, there's about 400 wild bee species in Ontario, mm -hmm. and we've been studying bees across eastern North America, and we've been noticing in a study last year, um, studying over 120 wild bee species, that uh, 14 are in decline. And so these are not the honeybee or the bumblebee that we know, mm -hmm. but the wild bees in general, many are in decline, and it's not subtle. It's rather 70 to 90 percent of the population seems to be um, declining. And why are we seeing this happening? As of course, again, we rely on bees. We need to have bees, um, you know, for, for sustainability. Right. Um, so the study we've done recently had a very long term um, um, approach where we looked at museums dating back 125 years and mm -hmm. were able to show. Um, the effects of climate change. So a lot of our studies we do day to day, we can't detect the large scale changes in the populations, but looking back a hundred years, we're able to see that in the Northeast, the climate has changed about two and a half degrees on average. Mm -hmm. And uh, with this, it's creating an offset. The flowers are blooming at, you know, a few days uh, differently than they did formerly. And this is affecting the bees because the bees are so in sync with their flower sources. Mm -hmm. and, and we think this is creating some of this mismatch. And therefore, if the flowers are out when the bees are not, and vice versa, this could actually lead to a lot of the bee declines that we're so, observing. And so when we're looking long-term, and of course, you, you bring up climate change, and I mean, even in, in Canada, we're seeing part of the country is, is, is dealing with so much heat, while the other side is having a much cooler uh, mm -hmm. summer so far, the east being hot, the west being much cooler. When we look at that, how is this now going to affect things long term? And I guess on the flip side, then what do we need to do? The yeah, the long term, it's it's creating increasingly unpredictable uh, climate. You know, mm -hmm. we uh, see dramatic highs and lows rather than uh, th uh, temperatures we can predict, and unfortunately, that creates a lot of problems. I mean, this year we know we had um, that. Uh, a very unusual cold for, uh, spell in May, and that killed off a lot of our crops, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so this kind of be this weather is just going to increasingly uh, affect the plants, the bees, the food, everything. And so what we can do going forward, it's um, for the bees, is having uh, a good variety of flowers available. Mm -hmm. uh, they can only forage on what is available when they when they happen to be around so people can plant wildflowers and we very much encourage native flowers mm -hmm. um, and on a more kind of global scale climate change we know is a problem and um, the average person you know if you can ride your bike instead of driving your car mm. you can recycle these are all things we can do to try to uh, eliminate some greenhouse gas emissions but mm -hmm. unfortunately that's kind of a federal and global problem we need better climate action on those scales. But individuals have a lot of power, and so yeah. you can plant gardens, you can do your part to be greener mm -hmm. in your own day life, yeah. You know, it's such a critical and important conversation. I'm glad we had the opportunity to speak to you about it. Sandra Rahan, Associate Professor of Biology at York University. Great having you on the program today, Sandra. Thank you for this. Thank you. You're welcome.